Okay, so while people are still settling in or, or leaving, I, uh, I want to welcome Godwin, Godwin Yeboah, which is a research fellow at uh, the Global Sustainable Development Research Institute at Warwick University. And we're going to stay on the topic of informal uh, settlements, if I correct, but look at the data quality at different stages. So the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so uh, my um, presentation is about analysis of uh, OSM data quality at different uh, stages of a participatory mapping process, evidence from informal urban settings. Uh, and this preliminary study is being uh, um, uh, co-authored by myself, uh, Rafael Troilo from Haggit, um, Vangelis and Joa also from the same institute as myself. And uh, okay, so the logos below are the uh, logos of our partners and um, other collaborators, and the one at the top right is for uh, our main funder. So as an overview, um, I'm going to uh, uh, highlight the research questions guiding this um, preliminary study. Um, and then uh, talk about the ongoing project, and then uh, highlight the, or talk about the participatory mapping process, um, and then the, how we define the mapping stages from this process. Uh, and uh, so the next will be the uh, results from these uh, defined mapping stages, and then give some concluding remarks. So one of the question is, uh, what is the level of uh, spatial data quality one can expect at different stages of um, the mapping process leading to the final update of the OSM database? And also, what are the uh, factors likely to influence quality? So these two research questions are, are, are explored uh, using uh, an ongoing project. So um, with respect to the on ongoing project, uh, its relevance to, uh, and its relevance to uh, OSM um, well, I would say one thing that we are doing differently is that we are systematically adapting OSM uh, to uh, develop a specially regulated sampling method in health research in a multi-country informal urban settings. Um, this uh, specially regulated sampling method is not actually um, uh, uh, presented in this uh, uh, presentation, but uh, I'm, I'm just put a citation there. If you're interested, you can look at it later. Um, so this ongoing project uh, is, uh, is titled uh, National Institute for Health Research, uh, Global Health uh, Research Unit on Improving Health in Slums at University of Warwick. And the goals are to uh, map health services and uh, facilities and understand their usage um, across um, several slums uh, in Asia and Africa. And to build on these um, uh, maps to under, uh, identify costs associated with um, seeking health care and also to build um, economic models of health services. So across these goals, uh, we are involving people who can change things like politicians, uh, slum residents, uh, and also the OSM community. And also we are uh, collating uh, existing evidence to inform this. The project is a four-year project and it's costing around um, six million uh, pounds. And uh, it has uh, five uh, main uh, work packages. And the results in this presentation are uh, drawn from the work package one, which is mainly about the geospatial mapping of the slums. Um, so in Work Package 1, uh, we are framing our research challenge um, as, uh, at the intersection uh, of uh, spatial data quality on one hand and uh, community engagement on the other. So we're trying to combine both. So the trade-off is the challenge, and we're trying to use um, uh, a combination of methods from geospatial data science, social research, to tackle this uh, challenge. And the project partners, um, the University of Warwick is the leading institution, lead institution um, in Africa, we're working with the uh, University of Ibadan in Nigeria. Uh, in uh, Kenya, we're working with African Population and Health Research Center. In Asia, we're working with uh, uh, Aga Khan University in Pakistan. And uh, in Bangladesh, we're working with Independent University uh, Bangladesh. Um, I've highlighted uh, there are about seven slums we are studying, but uh, for, this, for this presentation, um, I've highlighted those that I'm going to show the results. So Shasha um, and, uh, in Nigeria, uh, Korogocho in Kenya, and as ambassador in uh, Pakistan. Uh, just to give you a bit of um, idea about how the, s these three slums look like. So this as ambassador slum, um, the buildings are very tall, durable, um, and the uh, structures, are, uh, the roof of, rooftop architecture of the structures are of concrete type. And also there seem to be building um, structures in a vertical fashion on top of these structures. 
Uh, and this, uh, we realize, also has um, implications on uh, satellite, uh, the image interpretation during the uh, mapping. So this is the satellite imagery, but then we found it very uh, difficult to interpret the building footprint. And this, I'll show animation showing uh, this geometric chain and also some graphs. In the case of Shasha in uh, uh, Nigeria, um, it's slightly different. So it's not, it's not that durable. Um, the structures, uh, the, the rooftops are like, uh, uh, of, uh, of the roof type are like uh, roofing sheets. It's less dense um, and also um, not that tall. Yeah, let's just say that. Um, in, in, case of, in the case of Korogocho, um, it's the densest of the three um, and also has some similar characteristics in terms of the, um, the rooftop architecture like Shasha, but slightly different from Azambasti um, in that sense. So the participatory mapping process. This starts with the uh, preparation steps, preparation steps where we, um, we uh, uh, negotiate the slum assets um, uh, with local partners, um, and also uh, we uh, prepare the um, mapping platform using Hot Tasking Manager. Um, also, uh, we uh, procure satellite imagery, 50 centimeter satellite imagery. Um, we procure, uh, and also we, we, at this stage, we do also the uh, train the trainers and things like that. And also we, we define responsibilities um, um, amongst ourselves, ourselves at the University of Warwick and that of the local partners across Asia and Africa. The next step is online mapping where we use the tasking manager to do the mapping and then uh, online validation where we use uh, JOSM to do the validation with the help of other uh, um, 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 experienced uh, mappers. Um, and so after that, we uh, go to the field. We do GPS field mapping. We track um, the roads and the fourth parts in particular, uh, and uh, conflict the awesome database um, at the GPS digitization level. And then after that, we print the field papers, um, go to the field, we do what we call uh, structure uh, geometry verification. Um, we do this simultaneously with the other steps, uh, structure coding and field nodes. We realize that um, the field nodes um, 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 has to be um, uh, 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 collected in a structured manner. So we combine that uh, with the uh, field papers uh, using um, open data kit and open map kit. Afterwards, um, the data collected is conflated in, into the uh, open street map. Um, and then beyond that, uh, we do two, uh, we, we do two uh, key uh, uh, surveys, the so household health survey, just to identify um, the structures that are um, inhabited and those that are not, um, and also the health care facility survey. And after that, we uh, construct the sampling frame for the um, other work package, that is the household survey. So this sampling frame, um, once it's constructed, uh, we, we use the uh, special regulated sampling method um, I mentioned earlier uh, to uh, draw about 1,000 um, households for the survey. These are some statistics for the, uh, uh, of the participants. Um, what is interesting here is the case of Bangladesh, um, the third bar from, from left, um, where we had the presence of OSM community, and that helped also in the facilitation uh, of, uh, of, the, of the training and then also of the uh, field work itself. These are some examples of the uh, online mapping events. Um, involving the community um, in uh, Bangladesh and then Nigeria. And these are some of the um, examples of the uh, photographs of the uh, fieldwork itself in uh, Bangladesh and also in Kenya. So um, um, these um, mapping stages are drawn from the mapping process, the participatory mapping process. And we are uh, defining the stages um, as um, first stage one being the uh, before online mapping, the period before online mapping, and stage two being the online mapping and validation. So at this point, we've not yet gone to the field. So stage three is the actual field work, the period for the field work, and up to the point where the sampling frame or the data is sort of um, extracted for um, uh, constructing the sampling frame. And we look at uh, the uh, completeness um, and also the modification. So modification within this period and then the completeness um, also um, at the, uh, what we refer to as the completeness milestones. So we have these red um, lines there um, as uh, completeness milestones, and at, this, at, at those points we uh, uh, compute, the est uh, we estimate the, um, um, uh, in this case in completeness, the uh, uh, existence of uh, features. And we found it interesting also to compute the ratio of 
the co completer's um, estimate, milestone estimate at stage three um, over that of the um, completer's milestone estimate um, of stage, stage two. So stage two, we have the just um, digitize the online, uh, digitize the satellite imagery, digitize from the satellite imagery, and then stage three, we've done the uh, field work and wanted to compare the two. And we are framing this as completer's differential. So just to compare and know the differences. So from this, um, I'm gonna show you completeness graphs for uh, these three uh, satellite uh, slum uh, uh, areas and um, also the modification for these uh, slum areas. So in the case of Zambasti, um, this is the completeness graph, the, the completeness differential, the ratio uh, in terms of, uh, in percentage terms is about 82%, suggesting that actually um, the estimate at stage three, um, that is, uh, um, um, the ground, or you can refer to as the ground truth in estimate, is, um, or the gap between the uh, stage three and the stage two is about 18%. Um, and you see that in stage three also a lot of work being done in the field. Um, so I wanted to show you actually what actually happened. Because we had a problem with the interpretation of the satellite imagery, um, the, uh, the geometry, or should I say the map uh, in stage three is slightly different from the map in stage two. And this, um, how it works. So here it starts, stage one and stage two goes on, but from, the, from uh, left to right, you see a complete change. I don't know if you noticed that, but you see a complete change. So that's the, um, the problem with the interpretation of the satellite imagery uh, causing this change, because almost all the um, um, uh, things uh, digitized, um, features digitized, the buildings digitized, uh, changed. In Chasha, um, the the gap is very uh, uh, small. Um, the, so the complete differential in percentage, percentage terms is very uh, wide, well, very high. Um, so in a way, uh, it could suggest that uh, if, you, if you complete stage two, then um, it's almost okay to sort of use it for uh, stage three work without necessarily going to the, to the field. Uh, in the case of Korokocho, which is the uh, densest of the three, there's a wide gap, which is about uh, 37% um, between stage three and then stage two. Uh, we are still talking about completeness of buildings here. Um, so, but then, um, in all of these three, you notice that uh, the, the pattern, there's one, pa uh, one common pattern uh, across, which is the uh, estimate uh, at stage three is always less than that of uh, stage two. So, uh, in a way, um, I'll talk about that later. Um, in the case of the roads, um, the pattern is slightly different. So the estimates uh, at stage three is always higher, not less, higher than uh, stage two. And this is the same for Shasha, even though it's higher, but then it's, the, the difference is very small, but then it's still higher. Um, and the same applies to Korogocho. Now let's look at the modifications um, within the stages. Um, so we have um, a lot of work being done in stage three. You see the red bars there. Um, and the case of, uh, just sort of uh, um, confirming what happened uh, in the animation or what I've, talk, uh, I've talked about so far. Um, because of the difficulty in uh, stage two, uh, they had to do a lot of work in uh, stage three, in the field. Um, in the case of Shasha, it's slightly different because not, not um, a lot of work in stage three. Uh, in the case of Korogocho, um, appears to be a lot of work in uh, tagging and also deleting. Um, so, uh, in terms of factors influencing quality, um, the uh, 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 preliminary analysis so far suggests that density is key to that. Uh, density or density of buildings, or in that case, I've not shown that of uh, roads here, but density of buildings or roads uh, seem to um, have influence on uh, quality. So the, um, the, uh, the denser the, uh, the, the, the features, the wider the gap, or the lower the completeness differential in, in percentage terms. And also, um, the uh, rooftop architecture appears to have influence on quality because of what I've just talked about. Um, um, well, it's linked to um, difficulty interpretation, which in turn actually have uh, influence on uh, quality. That's basically what we want to say here. And also, um, 
Uh, the, the, the results so far suggest that uh, mapping skills, computer skills, knowledge of the tools are all uh, factors influencing quality. Um, so capacity building is essential for SLAM community engagement in mapping activities, um, especially in this context uh, when we want to uh, involve uh, SLAM residents, which we consider to be uh, local experts. Uh, so in summary, um, ground truthing um, is uh, essential for um, uh, areas with higher density of buildings and also um, of roads. And uh, we found out that uh, ground uh, truth estimates are about 18 to 37 percent less than that of the online mapping estimates. So I'm basically saying that ground truth estimates, uh, that is the stage three, is always less than um, that of the uh, online mapping estimates, which is stage two. And also, um, the uh, results so far points to the fact that less dense areas can reasonably, uh, probably I should have put quotes there, reasonably uh, be used as a sampling frame without necessarily going to the ground. And roads are easy to interpret, uh, useful, and must be mapped at all stages. So this helped a lot, but then uh, you realize that uh, for the roads, they were going higher in stage three. And we found out that those were, because in our context, informal urban settings, those were usually the fourth parts, which uh, we found it uh, a bit in, um, difficult to sort of identify in the satellite imagery, even though we did some of them, but um, they were all useful in a way. Um, so uh, for the roads, um, we, we've, like I said earlier, in terms of the, the common patterns across the, um, the, uh, the stage two and stage three, we found that uh, the, um, the ground estimates or stage two estimates, stage three estimates are about 11 to uh, 248 percent more than the online mapping estimates. Um, and so, yeah, to, in the summary, in, uh, in, in terms of factors influencing quality, we're talking about density, rooftop architecture, mapping skills, and of course, they are likely to be more, um, which are not explored here. Um, so far, I've not talked about the awesome uh, platform, uh, which uh, we found useful uh, in terms of the uh, data extraction, the historical data that we used for this um, analysis. And also, um, the study uh, points, to, uh, or points towards uh, a framework for understanding spatial data quality at different uh, mapping stages uh, leading to or some um, update. Um, so um, in terms of uh, future work or potential future opportunities, uh, we're currently working on combining um, participatory mapping and automated methods because now we have some sort of um, um, data um, we've gone to the ground, we have data, we, got, we have also data at stage two, just using the satellite imagery, we have data on the ground, verified the data. So this is very interesting um, when you want to uh, apply um, 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 machine learning methods, uh, for example. Um, also, uh, there, there could be an opportunity for uh, improvement of workflows and mapping tools, um, and also extending impact uh, in terms of multi-level um, collaborations. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Godwin, for another very good talk um, with interesting findings. Um, we'll take questions now. There's plenty of time. Go ahead. Really interesting, um, and I would love to talk to you afterwards. Um, I do a lot of um, work around workflows and field mapping for HOT, and it'd be really interesting to collaborate. Oh, great. Um, the statistic, I think it was like 18 to 37 percent of the buildings, um, yeah, if you can jump to that, that would be helpful. Um, yeah, less than the online mapping um, estimates. Um, we actually have found the same thing from Botswana to Guatemala and Liberia during field mapping activities. I would say a very similar percentage. Um, for us, know. we've, um, which is really cool to see it validated through your work as well. Um, for us, is it, is it the same like informal urban settings? Or? Well, see, a lot of these are, there's been both urban and rural okay. areas. Oh, that's, that's good. Um, yeah. And that. I'm, I'm curious because I've always attributed it more to imagery. And I was wondering, um, did imagery date come into play for you guys? What was the imagery dates that you were working with? Was there a big difference? Yes, yes, certainly, certainly. So this uh, was uh, um, 2000 and, uh, 
2018, and it was, I think the gap was about six months. Yeah, um, so you're right. And even if you have the current date, even today, uh, with our experience in uh, Bangladesh, uh, one of the slums there, it's unbelievable. If you go there the next week, everything has changed. Some uh, structures demolished, others built. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But for some places like Shasha, um, it's almost the same. You know, irrespective of the date, it's almost the same. Hi. Um, super cool. That was really interesting. Um, I have a question about um, the buildings that you omitted after doing your field work. Did you do any um, like spatial statistical analysis to understand like what it was about those buildings, whether it was like aerial extent or like their orientation compared to other buildings? Like were there any patterns that kind of came up in the structures that you did have to remove after doing the the field validation? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, I recall. Um, going through that because I was sort of anticipating questions around those things. Um, uh, uh, so um, some of them, um, if my memory serves and right, uh, most of them, like, uh, when it comes to um, especially the updates at the stage three, once they've gone to the field and they've come back with field papers and all that and they're doing the collation, uh, conflation, uh, it's always the case that there are instances where they have, like, three buildings to merge, but then, how do, you, how do you do that, you know? And you, in a way, uh, initially they were like deleting and creating another like just to, to cover the three. Uh, and then I, we were thinking of, we were trying to avoid delete, you know, as much as possible. So we tried to, for example, just use one geometry of the three and extend it like that and then clear the other two as much as possible, things like that. So, but then there could be other, other sort of reasons which I've not explored yet. We have time for a few more questions. Yeah. Thanks, Godwin, for the presentation. Just a couple of questions. So the first one is related to the previous one. So on the field, you, when you do the ground truth survey, you see that there are many, so less, less and less buildings. Is this only due to the fact that buildings are not there, or, only, or also the fact that something uh, was seen as a building from the satellite but was not a building or something that was seen as, you know, uh, more buildings attached to each other that actually was one single building. And in this case, how did you survey? Because, of course, you can take pictures on the ground, but it might be not so easy not to, to survey a building. And this is the first. The second is I saw in your workflow that you also use Open Data Kit. Uh, can you maybe elaborate more on um, why did you use it for photos or questionnaires and thanks. Okay, so with the last one, I'll start from the uh, second one. Uh, so with the second one, um, with the Open Data Kit, we wanted to um, go offline. So that was the main reason. So we were trying to find solutions offline and then come back online, you know, sort of thing. Um, and we explored um, yeah, other, other, other methods um, and we realized that we could just uh, sort of create uh, tiles. After, after we've uh, done the update, uh, stage two, we could just create tiles, load it in Open Data Kit, because it allowed us to um, first see what has been uh, digitized from the um, uh, satellite imagery, and then we could just place a node at the center of the, of the uh, structures, and later merge it. So we create nodes linking that to ODK. So we have a questionnaire. So we asked a question like, um, so now identify the structure. Because we realized also we tried with GPS, it wasn't working in terms of identifying the structures. So, but then it helped with ODK, it helped with uh, at least orient orientation. So we have the GPS sort of function that will show the uh, data collector roughly where they, they're standing and things like that. And then they have to really figure out um, where the structure is and, and locate that. As part of, as a response to the, that question, and then that would take it in. Uh, so it, basically, it was just going offline, I would say. Um, yeah, which also has implications, especially in data size, the, the device, and if you want to go scale it up, you know, in terms of area, because we are talking about small areas in this context. You know, I think the maximum is about 1.2 square kilometers, um, maximum um, area size, in terms of um, yeah. 
And then the other one, um, uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. This is something that we are we are looking into. Um, why this is the case? Um, but so far, it's basically the for the training is like try and identify all structures. <coughs> so so far as the satellite imagery suggests is a structure, you know, of course, mapping skills and all that thing also might play part in that. But then so far as it suggests so, then we are assuming this is the case. And we also the, for, with the structure because it's going to we tagged it so. It tagged as buildings, and if it's building, then it's like we use that as a basis uh, to go to to compare that with the stage three. Um, I don't know if I answered your question, but um, yeah. So of, certainly there are some errors around that um, in terms of interpretation and stuff. For example, in Azambasti, um, because of the rooftop the, the architecture there, uh, it was almost impossible to um, to identify the building footprints. So we could actually, um, one of the recommendations would be just even um, with su in such a situation, you, you don't need to even map the buildings at all. But then we found the road networks very useful. So you could just map the roads and just go to the field. This is one thing we found uh, very interesting. That there's no point to map the buildings actually in that industry. If you find it very difficult to interpret uh, the satellite image, then there's no point at all. And that would, might solve this question, I think, um, or your worry in this question, you know, as to, you know, how to compare. Yeah. Um, thank you for this. Uh, there's a last question, but also we're out of time, so go ahead and ask it, but people might, may come in and out. So go okay, ahead. it's really quick. Um, hi, I, I understand previously you were using printed field papers for, yes. um, are you, is that true? Have you stopped? If so, why? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, we are still using it. Um, but then uh, we want to build on the experience we have. So first, we wanted to test it. And so with this experience, we want to go further to um, understand. For example, one difficulty is once you've done the field papers, uh, you've done the annotation and all that, coming back to the, uh, the OSM uh, to update is something that the mappers were like, oh, this is a lot of work, you know? And we, we, must, we must find a way to sort of Release, uh, relieve them with this burden. Um, at the moment, we don't know. There could be some, I know we have, is it possum? There, we were trying to explore possum, which allows you to sort of deploy digitally without necessarily printing it out, printing the paper, a hard copy, you know, and then deploying it on the tablet and then going there to map and then going back to the, um, uh, uh, the conflation to, to update the uh, OSM data, uh, database. Um, yeah, we explored that and later stopped um, at some point uh, because, um, yeah, we wanted to go completely offline. Um, yeah. Thank you. I don't know if I answered your question. But <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Godwin. Thank you very much. And uh, we should move on to the next talk.